Hello guys, in this video I will show how to use AWS Relational Database Service to launch MySQL instance and later on we will see how to connect to that instance in the cloud using MySQL Workbench from my laptop. Here I am in AWS Management Console. I want to search for RDS Relational Database Service. Go to Databases and uh, create database so i will go with standard create and other option is easy create from the options here choose the engine you want to launch in cloud i want to use mysql there and we also can choose a specific version of mysql let me go with default version and again we got templates to select uh, depending on the use case like production, dev, test, free tier. Let me keep a template as production because I can show most of the options to you while uh, launching this uh, instance. Choose the instance identifier. Let's say in your account you are managing uh, three or four instances they should be a different ID identifier for each and every RDS instance so a uh, credential settings choose the username and also uh, choose your password there is an option to automatically generate this password or we can choose our own custom password confirm the password now comes database instance size depending on your workload and use case you have to choose the right capacity which meets your scaling requirements in order to stay in free tier I will select uh, T2 micro and the storage capacity for your database and storage type. It's supporting general purpose and it's also supporting provisioned IOPS. Provision IOPS is designed for applications which requires consistent IO performance. It's mainly intended for a critical production workloads, but I would like to stick with general purpose which is for dev and test environments and choose the storage let's keep that default we have a nice feature a storage auto scaling our initial capacity is 20 GB when we use our DB the data will steadily grow and when we are reaching right uh, out of disk space uh, RBS will take care of automatically expanding that disk and the maximum limit I'm giving here is 1000 GB. So availability and durability for uh, production workloads uh, we use multi AZ deployment where RDS will set up two database instances one primary other one as a standby uh, in two different AZs in case primary fails RDS will automatically uh, route traffic to the standby so that is good for production workloads and not really required for dev and test environment so let me choose do not create a standby instance for our demonstration now the connectivity part where we choose the network so we need to choose the VPC and subnets where our RDS needs to be launched and our RDS should be generally kept in a private subnet in the network so I am I'm choosing a default VPC there okay and we also can configure subnet group for example we have VPC with public subnets and private subnets uh, we will create a subnet group using private subnets such that we are forcing our RDS instance to be placed in a private subnet for this I'm leaving it as default otherwise right you can go and create your own subnet group 
uh, which decides what are the subnets you prefer to launch your database instance. All right. Anyway, so for this demonstration, default is fine. Publicly accessible, yes. If you say yes, your RDS instance will get public IP and you can access that instance from internet. And generally speaking, RDS should be a private one and we should always say publicly accessible no in real time scenarios. But in my demonstration, I want to make it yes, such that I can connect to this RDS instance from a laptop through internet and show you that demo. Now select VPC security group which secures our database instance. Okay. Uh, I'm leaving or let me create a new one. Java home or DS SG and coming to availability zone you can keep it no preference or you could say which availability zone our RDS instance needs to be launched. Database port, if you want to change, change it or leave it. Database authentication, password based authentication and there is a newly introduced IAM database authentication. I will cover this in a separate video. For now, I want to go with password based authentication. Additional configuration. Uh, I can choose initial database name. Let's call that Chow Home App and parameter group and options group. I'm leaving it. And coming to backups, TA supports a manual as well as uh, automated backups. I want to enable automated backups such that I don't need to especially do something to. Uh, take backups to my database. Backup retention default is 75 days and maximum could be 35 days. So if you're not interested in automated backups, you can keep it zero days. Let's leave seven days as default and choose backup window. Prefer choosing a backup window because uh, you are the right person to decide when your database will be more idle. Let's be see. And for now, I'm saying no preference. RDS will choose its default backup window. Enable enhanced monitoring. This is required in production, but may not be useful in development workloads. So leave that. If you want to see, if you want to audit uh, and check uh, how your database is doing, you can uh, select these check boxes to export your DB logs to CloudWatch. I want to keep eye on my slow queries. I could say uh, select slow query logs plus even it's important to keep track of exceptions occurring in my database. And maintenance, there is an option where you can automatically upgrade to the minor version if it is available in our AWS. So I'm not choosing that. For deletion protection, this helps uh, us to uh, protect database instances accidentally deleted. It's giving you the approximate estimated cost for using this DB where it is each month, it's going to be about $20 create database now. It takes few uh, seconds to minutes. I'll pause the video. I'll be back the moment database instance is ready. Before our database comes up, let me launch MySQL Workbench. Create new connection there. Host name, I'll get this later. Port number is default, 3306. The user name, let me also fill in the password.
get the host name of RDS. So go to endpoint and right grab the endpoint. Put it there and test the connection password. Connection successful, right? Yeah, cool. Hit OK and double click this, it will open the client for our relational database instance. Go and check schemas. Yes, there is a default schema which is provided at the time of launching RDS instance. Let's create new table. Employee ID, name, fine, looks like the table got created successfully. So if you want to insert data into this uh, employee table, Let's select and check the output. Course. If you are finding difficulties in connecting to a database instance, you might have to check the security group created for this RDS. So go and check a security groups inbound rules. Okay. So in this case, right, my uh, RDS security group allows uh, connections on double three zero six. That's my RDS port number only from my IP address, right? So cross verify the security group inbound rules if you have any issues in connecting to RDS instance.